Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. This, of course, Tony Hager. Welcome to Global Wrestling News. Our top story last weekend, Team Titan Mercury of San Marino, California, headed to Iran for the World Club Cup. That's where $50,000 was on the line for the victorious team. Team Titan Mercury rolled past Azerbaijan 7-1 in the first duel and then dominated the Brazilians on their first day of competition. That put them into the semifinals. Titan Mercury's Austin Trotman had the biggest victory of the day by earning a gritty 2-1 win over junior world bronze medalist Magomed Abdulakayev of Azerbaijan, that at 86 kilos. Trotman trailed 1-0 before scoring a takedown near the edge of the mat early in the second period. Trotman snuck into our top 10 freestyle rankings at 86 kilos this week. Could he surprise some other people this year? You know, Trotman jumps into the rankings because he had a he had a good showing at the Bill Farrell. Came up with the fourth place finish. Had a big win over Duran Win in Vegas at the Prowl event. So, uh, you know, he, he gets into there, but I don't think he's got much more to go as far as the rankings from Dan Lobdell and Take On Wrestling because Jake Herbert's there, Ed Ruth. I mean, David Taylor and Kyle Dake. I mean, they're ranked eighth and ninth. I mean, they haven't, they haven't done, any, done anything. Yeah, they haven't done anything <laughs> yet, but. You know, just to have those names above you, right above you, is saying something about the 86 kilograms. Uh, we go to the semifinals. It was there. The team from the United States dominated the Armenians. The score is 6-2, and it was led by an effort by Tony Ramos. Ramos was down 6-2 himself when he countered a bad shot by Garnik Matskanya and launched him to his back with that signature cow catcher for the fall. And that had set up a duel against the defending champs of Iran, Team Vimya Razi. Tight Mercury, of course, loaded at 57, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, this is probably Tight Mercury's deepest weight class with five ranked wrestlers, Tomasello, Dennis, McDonough, Joe Colonna, and the top dog, Tony Ramos. I mean, Tony Ramos is being pushed by number six, number seven in his own room, Matt McDonough and Dan yeah. Dennis. So, you know, one thing to note, though, from there is, is Matt McDonough is working through an injury. Uh, so not for sure how much he's been able to work with Tony Ramos, but at the end of the day, I mean, those are two guys that are pushing you for your Olympic hopeful birth, and they're trying to get it for themselves, too. So. But, well, it's smooth sailing until the finals where a star-studded roster for Team Iran was too much for the Team USA. The powerful Iranian club started fast and never really let up, earning a 7-1 victory over the Americans. Titan Mercury had another strong showing, finishing 3-1 on the two days and the dual meet event. And that, of course, in freestyle. The Iranians earned $50,000 for the victory at the World Club's Cup. Tight Mercury collected $30,000 for taking second for the second consecutive year. You know, overall thoughts on this, I think it was a strong performance from a team that only had one world team member, and that was Tony Ramos. And uh, another thing that sticks out to me, Scott, is $50,000. I mean, there's some dollar signs there. What I want, want to see more of, USA Wrestling doing that, or at least letting people know what they are. Do you remember uh, an event that was around called Tour ACW? Yeah, yeah. They gave around $2,500 for the winner, and that was an exciting time because wrestlers had something to wrestle for. They mean, not they mean they want to win the championship, but they want a little win a little money for what they're doing. All right, when we come back, Roy Salger and Wayne Boyd are going to offer their opinions on the World Club Cup. They were there, but first, let's take a look at the UWW Big Move of the Week. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Well, with more on the Cup, we're joined by two guys who were there in Tehran, including Titan Mercury co-founder Wayne Boyd and one of the top coaches in the business, Roy Salger. Wayne, with all the unrest in the Middle East, how difficult was it to make the trip happen? Well, Scott, I didn't know today I was going to be on the streets of New York. We got a little rain here. Uh, got back from Iran Sunday and uh, taking three days of R&R &R in New York, uh, had some meetings, but uh, the tournament itself, just getting there, was a huge challenge. Couldn't get our visas, couldn't get our passports, USA Wrestling said, gee, let's not do this thing, it's just too much difficulty. I said, nothing great has ever been accomplished if you don't overcome adversity. And the first step was to get those visas and passports, we changed all our flights. Everybody rendezvoused in Washington, D.C. 
and holy mackerel, 1 to 3 p.m. on a Saturday, a consulate from the uh, Washington, D.C. headquarters walked into my hotel room with 14 passports and 14 visas. So miracles happen when we put ourselves out and we expect a miracle. And the next thing I know, we were on our way to Iran. It took a good 22 hours to get there. The guys rested. We arrived about 2.10 a.m. We didn't get to the Olympic Village until the Iranian Olympic Village, which was quite nice. About 5 in the morning, we rested. We were up on our feet going after it. We trained. We lost weight. And then we entered the competition. We went undefeated all the way to the finals. We shut the sale out. Had a great match with Azerbaijan. The guys performed well. I have to give big kudos to Andrew Howe. He was the only one that went undefeated. We had our Olympic champion with us, Jake Barner. What a job he did until the finals. And he met this bear from Iran. And he had said in public to 60 million people, I will show Jake Barner what an Olympic champion really looks like. And he proceeded to do so. He checked Varner in under 90 seconds. Varner seemed to be just, didn't know what to do. He was overwhelmed, but uh, he had a great tournament. Uh, Varner's still on his way back. We know he's our second best guy in the United States. And uh, Ramos was sharp. He was behind six to one and pinned the guy, which was a great comeback. I'd love to Schlater at 70 kilos. Nice job. Only lost one match. Uh, and we hired two Iranians while we were there because we were short at 65 kilos. Aaron Pico couldn't make the trip due to a broken nose. And that guy went two and two. Uh, the other guy, Strotman, had a great one his first two matches. Then pulled him out for one, and then he lost one. And then before Trotman, of course, was Howe, and Howe did a great job. Our heavyweight from Iowa. Bobby Telfer, he really learned a lot. He's a big boy. He's six foot six or something, long arms, long legs. He um, he won two matches and, and looks really good. So uh, all in all, very pleased. Daniel Dennis looks great. He won two matches. We finished second. I brought home an incredibly gorgeous cup from the uh, World Clubs Cup Wrestling Championship Freestyle. And in that cup was 300 American $100 bills, which is always nice. It's nice to see the sport of wrestling spending money for the guys that are out there on the mats winning matches. Royce, you actually brought on two wrestlers from Iran. Was there ever any concern that they might not give 100%? Well, we thought about that earlier, and then we kind of looked at the latter and we got some guys on the bubble. And when you're training for Olympic Games, you know, you're you're up against, you know, you're trying to fill that spot. And uh, there was some intrepidation at first, thinking that they would show um, favor to the the Iranians, you know, to their homeland. But <clears throat> um, we also put an incentive um, that they either, you know, if they won, they got such a amount of money. If they didn't, they didn't make any money. And uh, in my personal and professional view of it all, um, I believe that they um, they they wrestled earnestly and, and as hard as they could. So uh, they actually won some matches for us, and you know uh, I thought they they competed well. So yes, it was a little bit, but you throw some dollar signs at at a at a wrestler who's not making much money, they're going to compete a little harder as well. All right, Wayne, back to you. Titan Mercury is going to be playing a huge role in the World Cup this June. What can you tell us? Well, we got, uh, I know who's coming. I can't give you the list right now, uh, but we can do that next week. Uh, we are going to go all out to not only sell the arena out, but have everybody in America rooting for our team because we need to win that World Cup. And I think going into the Olympics, we're poised to do that. Uh, I really still believe we're going to have a great team in Rio. I think we're going to see more medals than we did at the World Championship. And I think in two, going towards 2020, we're going to lead the world in wrestling. 
Well, our guest today, Roy Salger, one of the great coaches for Titan Mercury and club co-founder Wayne Eric Boyd. Guys, thanks for the time and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. Big kudos out to Melina Wick and Debbie Priester and John Rubin. They did a great job. And, you know, nothing happens without a team effort. So let's all continue to get together and move towards our goals. Life is an opportunity one day at a time. All right, next up, the Double Leg Ninja hops into the Nike hot seat. Stay tuned. It's Global Wrestling News. All right, welcome back. Joining us now in the Nike hot seat, a world team member, a two-time NCAA champ for Northwestern and the Wildcats. He's that man that rocks the locks, Jake Herbert. How are you, bud? Do very well, Scott, man. Thanks for having me on, especially this Nike hot seat, man. Nobody better than having Nike-sponsored athlete here on the hot seat. About that, Olympic rankings are out, done by our own Dan Lobdell. What did you think of them? You guys did a fantastic job. I was either going to be really happy or really upset. <laughs> I mean, you got the number one down, and that's really in the end game that all that matters, that, you know, number two through seven, you can finish wherever you want, but that doesn't mean you're going over to Rio. I know Andy Rovat talked to Dan at the Bill Farrell about your injury. My question is, what injury? Are you hurt? What can you tell us? Well, I know it's hard to look at these muscular things, but I got the stitches taken out last Wednesday. I had my shoulder scoped. I already have full range of motion. I set a two, I think, Guinness Books of World Guinness Book of World Records for fastest going from shoulder surgery to full range mobility, and then as fastest of doing. Um, getting shoulder surgery, and then doing a front handspring two weeks later. So, Well, anytime you have an invasive surgery like that, it takes a toll on the body. What's your rehab been like? Oh, it's just a daily thing. I mean, you, 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 like, it's completely different for being uh, an elite athlete and, like I said, a normal human being. If I was a normal human being not trying to win, you know, world and Olympic titles, I, w I would never even need the shoulder. I could get through day-to-day -day life doing all I do. But to be able to smash Sajalayov and beat these Iranians and these tough guys that are coming out, I need everything at 100% to put myself in the best position possible to win. So I do everything a little different. When you when you see your normal people going in and doing physical therapy, they go three times a week, right? And they maybe do it once or twice outside of you know the physical therapy. That's it. This is my job. You know, this morning, range of motion. This afternoon, I got my next range of motion. At night, I'm doing my range of motion, my exercises again. So I actually have a plan that not only do I stick to, but I do it outside of the physical therapy. So it's not just the time in physical therapy. It's all the stuff I'm doing outside of it too to build this base back up so that three weeks from now when I'm back on the mat, my shoulder is going to be strong. I'm going to ease my way back into it because I don't need to be full fed and ready to go until my 31st birthday, March 6th, when I qualify um, our weight class for the Olympics. Well, your weight class is stacked. Ed Ruth, Keith Gavin, Clayton Foster, Dake, and Taylor. What are your overall thoughts? I love it. I can't wait to watch the U.S. Open. And, and now with all these guys, I guess, bumping away from Jordan at 74, this is making 86 kilo one of the best weight classes out there uh, that we have. I mean, it's almost as much fun as 66. Now, don't get me wrong, 66 is probably still my... Uh, or sorry, 65 kilos now. It's still my favorite weight class to watch. I mean, you got James Green, Metcalf, Pico, you know, Frank Molinaro, Jimmy Kennedy, Kellen Russell, BJ Fruchel. I mean, that that anybody in that top 10 can make it, and that's the way that weight class always is. But now with the bigger guys up at 86, I cannot wait for the U.S. Open to happen here in like 17 days and watch how these guys play out. But you won't actually be competing at the U.S. Open, correct? Nope, just just watching and sitting there scouring and just, uh, you know, I'll let everybody else beat each other up for uh, their spot. I'm already qualified for the Olympic trials. Obviously, with the shoulder surgery, I wouldn't be ready in time, and it, it doesn't really serve me any purpose to go. Well, when will we see you back in action? What's your next event? I, I think the next one is what it's looking like is going to be uh, the Pan American qualifier down in Dallas, Texas on my birthday, uh, March 6th. Jake, it's always good to talk to you. Thanks for the time today. Thank you, Scott. Love hearing your voice. It's soothing. See, Hager, somebody actually likes the sound of my voice. Where do you see Jake finishing in Iowa City? Is he headed back to the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, if he can stay healthy, get, well, actually get back to being healthy, I think he is going to be the favorite. We saw him just dominate at the World Team Trials. 
World Championship didn't really go his way, but uh, you know, if if Jake Herbert with his experience is healthy, we'll see him. Stay tuned, it's Global Wrestling News. All right, welcome back. You'll notice Hager has changed his shirt. I'm going to tell you about that and why it's significant on this show a little bit later. Presented by our good friends at Takedown Sportswear, nearly two dozen collegiate programs from around the nation collided in the world's most famous arena. That was Sunday, and three Big Ten powers left undefeated. Tony, what did we learn at the Grapple at the Garden? Rutgers, they are the real deal. They went 2-0, and and I told you that you need to be looking out for the three Anthonys, right? Three Anthonys, you did indeed. I think Cornell seemed a little sluggish, maybe a little bit better in the coming months. What are your thoughts? Yeah, you're right. They seemed a little sluggish. I was kind of surprised. It was really kind of home field advantage, but, you know, they're the top dogs, Dean, Garrett, they, they showed up and performed. Kind of just put the whole team together. Well, Nebraska also defeated Cornell. 21-14, to that score. Have we overlooked the Huskers? Huskers are young, so you know, big names just haven't hit the headlines yet. You know They're doing a really good job recruiting, so I think Nebraska is here to stay. Big test will come with that Big Ten conference schedule. Our next topic, huge upset at the same event. To start the season, it was Drexel's Matt Samato upset Jason Sertz's 7-1, that at the grapple. Is the story Matt Samato or Jason Sertz's? I was, I, I was surprised by Sirsis giving up seven points. He's just so hard to score on. Yeah. And, I mean, losing, I could see that. You know, he's got a lot of stuff going on off the mat, family, losing his coach. So, uh, you know, I think he'll bounce back from this once things, you know, slow down for him and he gets his head right. You know, caution here. Don't take anything away from Somato. I mean, you brought that name up on the radio show this weekend. I think this young man is really, really good. I think he's going to make some noise this year. Was this his coming out party? 100%. I mean, he's been looking for that big, big name win, and, and Jason Sersis obviously is, is it. So, uh, you know, with this, I think Coach said on the radio show, we just got to get him to be consistent. So, not just have these big ups and big downs. Got to be just a level, level throughout the season. Well, once a storied rivalry has turned into a one sided or lopsided duel between Iowa and Iowa State. The Hawkeyes again dominated the Cyclones 33 to 6. Is there a solution to what's happening in Ames? I know the, the one solution, you know, it, we've been talking about this is attendance. Uh, when it comes to the, the talent on the, you know, the team, I think, I think Kevin Jackson is doing a little bit better job of recruiting and we'll see them come up here in the next couple of years. Uh, the talent that he has in the room, a lot of people have used the excuse of, well, he, uh, Sanderson might have took a lot of their recruits. Can't use that as an excuse if you're an Iowa State fan. We got to figure out, is it the talent? coaching, atmosphere, something needs to change up there if they want to be not only competitive against Iowa, but in the Big 12 now. USA Wrestling has kicked off a Get Yoked for Rio campaign. This explains Tony's change of attire here on the show. It's a social media activity in which people can have a little bit of fun, all the while supporting USA Wrestling's Olympic year. People across the nation around the world are being encouraged to post a video of themselves cracking or smashing an egg on their head in support of USA Wrestling's quest for gold. Don't forget to use the hashtag get yoked for real when posting your video so others can see it. So Tony, what are the steps you need to take in your video? First you have to accept, get a couple eggs, cell phone, some friends to make you laugh. And uh, first thing you need to do though, before you smash the egg, is acknowledge a few things, Scott, which you didn't do on Takedown Radio. So we gotta clear that up, all right? Right. right. Th first, you gotta thank the person that challenged you, which was Scotty, thank you very much for doing that. Then you need to state that you are doing the Get Yoked for Rio Challenge by USA Wrestling. Yep, did that. Mention that you have or will donate. Yep, we've done that too. Call out three or more people to take the challenge and donate. So I challenge Tony Ramos, Ethan Anderson, and Grandview's head coach Nick Mitchell. Next, start smashing. <laughs> Why lastly, you, yeah. what do you, you got to do, lastly? Just, Don't forget to upload your video to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Use that hashtag, Get Yoke For Rio, and make your donation to help USA Wrestling win golds at GetYokeForRio.com. All right, Tony, we're out of time, sadly. Yep. Make sure you check out our Freestyle Greco and women's rankings on TakedownWrestle.com. For our executive producer, Andrew F. Barth, our producer, Wayne Boyd, and my partner in crime, Mr. Tony, egg in your face, Hager. <laughs> I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week right here on Global Wrestling News.